Pluto represents Shiva, and Shiva represents the Holy Spirit. It's all tied up with the symbolism of the astrological sign Scorpio. Yeah. Psychologically, it represents the underworld cycle. It represents the cleansing process of the psyche. It represents that which is hidden. It represents the spiritual agencies that come in to deconstruct everything that is false. It represents the unconscious, that part of us which is, you know, connected to the soul. Mm. So when you have people out there who these scientists telling you that it suddenly doesn't exist or it doesn't matter anymore, hmm. it's not the physical rock up in space that they're really referring to. They're talking, they're, it's a collective denial situation. Yeah. If enough people believe that Superman, Sherlock Holmes, and Robin Hood existed, then they did exist, if everyone believes it. Yeah. The human mind can, you know, create every kind of fantasy that it wants. In fact, 99 point something percent of people have been living in a fantasy from the moment they've been born to the, to the time they die. Yeah. They've never, ever encountered real reality at all. So, what they have inside their heads is an idea of reality. Yeah. So what we have here is a collective denial going on. Pluto represents great, enormous change. Change to what? Change to the ego. Change, change to all that is false. So the people who are false and who are driven by the ego are going to want to deny the existence of that archetype. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it's very connected to what's happening in the psyche. But at the same time, it's paradoxical. You have to attract our attention to it while at the same time saying it's no longer there. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> to do that is because the kinetic battery of the mind le leaks off a lot of energy. When you attract the human consciousness to something on a mass level, just like the crop circle phenomena did, and anything that, uh, yeah. you know, uh, anything that uh, focuses a lot of mental energy releases a lot of mental psychic, psychic kinetic energy. Hmm. So they want us to become conscious of Pluto. With one hand, they're drawing attention to the planet Pluto, knowing that that will awaken within us certain archetypal responses. Hmm. Then at the same time, they're, they're downing it. Pluto brings about the... Uh, time to examine the inner world as opposed to the outer reality. Uh, Pluto asks you to look at the roots of things. It asks you to look at the underside of reality. And it asks you to look very deeply at your emotions and what kind of, of negative emotional um, attachments that you have. And it asks you to sever those. So it's not going to be something that is uh, just collective in nature. It's also going to be individual. Mm. And these changes will come in individually, depending on the lifestyle of the person. What it does is it exposes corruption, it exposes immorality and lack of virtue. It exposes everywhere where there's dirt that's built up that is not looked at. Hmm. You know, so that's going to be different for, for everyone. Everybody has a different level of toxicity, everybody has a different level of denial. Yeah. You know, and of course, as we know, as any homeopathic doctor will tell you, uh, just before there's a period of healing, there's also a period of a lot of toxic release. Yeah. So I expect to be seeing that. I expect this thing to take a very psychological, uh, you know, sort of a... A, d a dark a night. I, I think it's going to take a very psychological tone, so we're going to see a lot more sickness. We're going to see a lot more schizophrenia. Hmm. We're going to see a lot more neurosis and paranoia. Paranoia is in the mind of everybody. It's already pretty much rampant in society, and it's not going to continue more. And it's going to affect people's relationships. When, when distrust breaks out amongst thieves, it's the worst situation possible, isn't it? Because nobody trusts each other. Yeah. You see, because what you're doing is you're seeing your own criminality in somebody else. You know, you're projecting, you're saying that somebody's attacking you, so then you, you think that you, your attacks on them are justified. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of paranoia, there's a lot of double, uh, there's a lot of contradictoriness. Yeah. A lot of just accusation and aggression. You know, Pluto does rule, massive upheaval. Um, the positive side of Pluto is that you can you can see where your emotional negative emotional patterns are. You can see how you're using other people to fill your emptiness, yeah. or that you're escaping from you know the uh, the true virtues of life, and then you can put an end to it. Hmm. Pluto has a positive aspect as well. It says, can you make radical changes in your life? Can you can you make radical you know metamorphic changes so that you live up to your highest caliber? That you learn to fall in love with the word no. You, stand, you start to stand up for yourself, and can, can you end your fear? Can you end your paranoia? Can yeah. you say, what is it that I'm really afraid of? Why do I live a life of anxiety? Yeah. It's like I keep talking about in my work. Can people start to see that these dark guardians, the anxiety, the loneliness, the fear, 
these are all sorts of guards or guides that are telling you that something's wrong in the body politic. Yeah. And you start listening to them and saying, okay, look, I'm, I'm going to heed you. And I'm going to now analyze what it is that I think may be wrong in my life. Is it because I'm being bossed around and I let people you know, cross my boundaries? Mm. Is it because I'm totally addicted to the approval of other people? <laughs> yeah. Is it because I think that they have something that I need that I can't provide for myself? Yeah. Is it because I've got people around me that I've given my love and my trust to, and therefore I just assume that they're giving me the same thing back? <laughs> you see, we're living in a constant state of illusion. We, we prefer delusion. Yeah. You know, yeah. people that you see as slaves every day driving from 4 o'clock in the morning in their cars, you know, to these 9 to 5 jobs. Uh, yeah. The basis of all of that lie, Henrik, is fear. It is, it is. People think they're not going to be provided for, you know, that, that the, the truth, the, the divine guides are not going to help them find their own unique expression. Exactly. They're afraid to step out of the box. They're yes. afraid to contact the spirit guides. They're afraid to live spontaneously. They're afraid to think mutably. So, I mean, I mean, is this... Uh, does then uh, this this period uh, demand of us to not be you know not be afraid of these changes and to you know get past this we have to um, first recognize what what is uh, part of our you know darker side so to speak and then change yeah. accordingly is that the thing you're saying here yeah I, you put it in, in a perfect nutshell the main theme of any kind of plutonic action in a person's life and remember there are certain people see so planet Pluto is coming into the zodiac into a prominent place. So the energy of Pluto is now going to affect the world. But there's uh -huh. some individuals who have Pluto very strongly in their chart, and they're going through this all the time. Mm. So it, there's already people who know what I'm talking about because they have Pluto or Scorpio very, very prominently in their chart. And those poor people you know, know exactly what I'm talking about because their lives are dominated by this archetype. And they know very deeply about what you just said. Yeah. The idea is that there is a deconstructive cycle in nature. Yeah. In the in the year we have the winter cycle. In the psyche, we want to live in the one season world of the summer all all the time. <laughs> yeah. What that means is that you become declimatized to the winter cycle within yourself. And our society, the advertisements, the uh, whole Apollonian type of mindset of our world prevents us from going through these deep cycles. You know, one could argue and say women are closer to it than men because women do, you know, get pregnant. They have they have the menstrual cycle and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm telling you, I don't even really believe that too much. I think that most people try to live in a one-season cycle in which it's a very masculine, solar, super-lit world. Yeah. And they're, they are very deeply disconnected from the organic and from the body, from their libido, from their sexuality, from nature. Yeah. Now, Pluto comes in to restore it, so there's nothing negative about that. It's trying to reconnect you to the inner life, to the life that's interdirected, to the natural cycle. And part of that natural cycle is that things must end, particularly yeah. those things that are not sustainable in the first place. Yeah. Now, you take that up to the higher level, or take it uh, you know, to the macro level, and then you have the whole question about the decline of civilization itself. Yeah, exactly. that not only do small emotional patterns in people's individual lives have to end, but there, you, there's also, on a higher level, the decline of civilization. I mean, Oswald Spangler. Yeah. You know, get on the Internet, people who are listening to this, and read up on Oswald Spangler, the great, uh, you know, historian who's a self-taught historian who spoke about the, the rise of civilization, that it comes to its peak, and then it, 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 it you know, it, it perishes. I connect that to the life and death of the ego, that the ego literally is something that has a life. An individual is born. It's, it's very easy to understand. Yeah. A human being is born as a baby grows to maturity, and then dies. And the ego is the superman. The ego is the anthropos. Hmm. The ego is the god-man. And the ego also has a birthday, uh, you know, a maturity, and then a death day. Hmm. I believe we may be living uh, in Pisces, the whole sign of Pisces, which we are very close to the end of Pisces now. Yeah. I believe that we may have gone through the 12 cycles of the hero. And we may be now moving into the closing cycle of the ego of man itself. Now, that doesn't hmm. mean that, you know, consciousness dies. Because consciousness is more than the ego. Yeah. But it may mean that, that the ego itself goes through a massive transformation, and everyone who's got their, their life has been built by the ego, then that is going to perish. Hmm. But that perishment is correct. That perishment is not something to be lamented. Yeah. That, that, that uh, you know, cycle of closure, just like they show in the movie Fight Club, there is a time when, you know, the uh, drama of the ego must end, and the whole of society must crumble and be burned down. Yeah. <laughs> if it is too brittle, then it breaks, and then there's a catas catastrophic breaking. Yeah. But if there is a reverent, ritualistic, shamanic understanding,
understanding of the depth cycle and what that means, then there is a completely different type of action. And it does mean, as you said, ending one's fear of things that are natural. Hmm. Fear only arises when there is a resistance to the natural. When somebody is trying to maintain or perpetuate something that is highly unnatural. Yeah. Or when somebody is trying to face, uh, or trying to prevent themselves from facing something about themselves. You see, that is, uh, that is, uh, but just as the movie V for Vendetta was showing, yeah. Just like so many other movies and so many other philosophers are showing, that if you have fear, then you can expect to be chained up by the master and led like a dog. Yeah. 